Howdy, pull up a barrel, matey. Let's discover how these retail stores get such hated reputations or even went bankrupt. Arr, these be the most hated retail stores. Our goal is to find out what makes these retail stores get so shunned by the public, and perhaps what we can recommend to improve their reputation. Even if that advice just comes down to start prioritizing customers over profit, or just be nicer to customers. Arr, anyway, let's begin. Number six, Dollar Tree. Damn, Dollar Tree, what happened here? They scored among the three absolute lowest retailers on the American Customer Satisfaction Index, and around a 1.2 stars average on reviewer websites. And they're just chock-a-block full of controversy everywhere I looked. Dollar Tree is the Millhouse of retail shopping. No one likes Millhouse, and no one likes Dollar Tree. But as I researched more, I realized it gets worse than that. Dollar Tree literally contributes to world hunger. H how do you even do that? You see, Dollar Tree isn't the Millhouse of retailers, it's the cockroach of retailers. You stamp out one of these stores and five more will pop out from the dark. My jaw dropped when I realized there are over 15,000 thousand of these useless stores in America and Canada alone. We are the largest retailer in the US. I exaggerate when I call them useless, but the primary problem is Dollar Tree doesn't sell much food, and certainly not anything fresh or perishable. These 15,000 stores sell mostly random non-perishable trinkets like pencils, party supplies, or cleaning supplies. And the problem with this is, well, have you ever heard of food deserts? I think this picture captures its meaning well. It's an area that has limited access to nutritious and affordable food. So they might have lots of fast food joints and dollar stores, but no grocery stores that sell things like fresh fruit and vegetables or fresh fish and poultry. According to the USDA, nearly 13% of Americans are living in these food deserts. And Dollar Tree has contributed to this problem. How? Well, as we can see, these stores breed like rabbits. And in all these locations these dollar stores are opening up, they undercut supermarkets. So instead of a supermarket or a grocery store, we get a Dollar Tree. Woohoo! This leaves local residents with little to no healthy food options. So while they can still get a pack of guaca chips at their local Dollar Tree, they won't be able to get any fresh fruit, frozen vegetables, fresh chicken, or even just a bottle of milk. And this dollar twig has loads of other problems too. Customers have found a lot of expired foods and even expired medications in their shopping. Tina's a regular Dollar Tree customer, and she said, I bought a six pack of Dr. Pepper from Dollar Tree. When I got it home, I realized something was very wrong. The drink had no fizz. I checked the expiry date and it expired two years ago. Even my nasal decongestant I bought was about to expire. Another customer bought a bag of trail mix that had expired six months ago. One man went to his Dollar Tree and bought a two year old frozen pizza. Then there's a surprising amount of violent crimes that happen at Dollar Tree. I know, weird right? But as I've pointed out, these Dollar Tree stores are everywhere including many high crime neighborhoods. And to lower costs, they have minimal staffing. Dangerous or not, they're certainly not gonna shell out to hire security guards. According to ProPublica, more than 200 violent incidents involving guns have occurred at Dollar General stores from 2017 to 2020, nearly 50 of which have resulted in deaths. Now, this isn't meant to be scaremongering. The chances of you getting caught up in a crime in a dollar store are still very low, but it highlights the sheer magnitude of the problems these dollar stores create. Dollar Twig is also known for health and safety issues. Just to be even grosser, they get regular rodent infestations. The FDA found that Dollar Tree had captured over 2,300 rodents in two months. Oh, that's, that's nasty. It's crazy, isn't it? I never would have pictured Dollar Tree to be such a disastrous downer of a store. Oh, this is terrible. Hey, honey, do you have any good news for us? Yeah, there's a Hello Kitty dentist. What? Boo and I are getting a checkup. Ugh, of course there's a Hello Kitty dentist. Because I guess getting a filling wasn't unpleasant enough without a giant white kitten staring down my gullet. Y you two go. I I'll go to my regular dentist, like an animal. Yar, number five. Walmart. 
You've likely heard of Walmart because, you know, it's the largest supermarket chain in the world. And personally, I do like that it can provide easy, relatively affordable shopping for even people in poverty. But this doesn't necessarily translate to happy customers, well-treated employees, or well-run stores. There's been entire documentaries on some of Walmart's bad practices, such as the high cost of low prices. It's a price none of us can afford to pay. Unfortunately, Walmart is well well known for paying their workers poorly, and sometimes treating them poorly. Now everybody all has horror stories about Walmart, we know this. This is no different. But more on that shortly. From the customer perspective, people primarily complained about long lines, stock just never making it onto the shelves, big crowds, and a lack of staff. Lawrence's review is a good example of this. Walmart has about a thousand registers and it's only operating two of them. They don't want people to steal, but they're making it impossible to pay. What did our buddies on Yelp think, according to Maisie? This place should be evacuated, fumigated, filled with quick drying cement and shuttered forever. If I never set foot in this dump again, it will be too soon. And these are just two of so many complaints. Walmart has so many one-star reviews it'll make your hat spin. In 2015, the Walmart CEO acknowledged the many criticisms they received, and they said, We acknowledge the need for Walmart to refocus on cleanliness, tidiness, restocking quicker, and more selection in fresh produce. Sorry. These complaints also repeatedly show in Walmart's customer satisfaction. In 2023, an ASCII study showed Walmart right at the bottom of the list of supermarket ratings. In fact, they've gone six years in a row finishing lowest customer satisfaction or tying for lowest. Simply put, Walmart has a shocking reputation, both offline and online. For example, on Trustpilot, Walmart has scored 79% one-star reviews of 9,500 reviews. Holy flying spaghetti monster, that's bad. Since that's over 7,500 one-star reviews, let's pull out a few random ones. A lot of customers like Steve were charged for orders that just never arrived. Jeez, that's literal daylight robbery. Delivery drivers don't look at house numbers. They took a picture of my package on a stranger's porch. And the same thing with Cheyenne. I ordered an iPhone for my daughter. I received a box with only bubble wrap and a receipt. I've been in on the phone every single day. No refund or offer to replace. I don't like it. I'm sorry about your daughter's phone, Shan. That's awful. It's pretty clear from these reviews that Walmart messes up their orders a lot. But then there's the employee experience, which somehow has an even worse reputation than the customer experience. A shocking amount of Walmart's one-star reviews have been from staff. Many were poorly treated and overworked, like Bianca and Deb. As an overnight stalker, I tried my hardest to hang in there. But if I asked my coworkers for help, I'd be given attitude. I was overworked and treated like dirt by the staff. Jeez, I'm sorry, Deb, that's awful. Even in my own community, some posters were ex-employees of Walmart. Or some heard horror stories from friends who worked at Walmart. Hex worked there firsthand, and they got a lot of mistreatment from both staff and customers. And the higher-ups just didn't seem to give a crap. Walmart's been historically anti-union as well. This basically means they remove anyone to defend you if the big shots pay you badly, mistreat you, or fire you. Walmarts that even begin to unionize have been known to just suddenly close. In another case, the old Walmart executive Tom was forced to resign after facing charges of embezzlement. He was bribing employees to stop unions from forming. As you do, the only way he could be a more obvious villain is if he started twirling his mustache. My own limited experience with the store is when I visit my family in Canada. I've only once ever met a rude Canadian. When? Yep, when I visited Walmart. Most of the staff were really nice, but that one checkout person, they glared at me like they wanted me dead. And given the working conditions I've just described of the place, I get it. Or maybe they saw my opinion on Scooby-Doo. Anyway. Number four, GameStop. 
formerly known as Babbage's. I was surprised to find just how often GameStop was recommended as hated by my community. But when I looked it up, yeah, there it was, right in the bottom of the American customer satisfaction ratings. Even their online store sat right near the bottom of the list, right nearby Walmart. Only when you pre-order God of War 3 at GameStop. Power to the players. So why all the angry fuss about this mall-based game store chain? I looked at my community and Wiki Dreamer said, Where to begin with GameStop? Lack of pay, staff, hours, employee empathy, and customer care. There are too many horror stories as both a customer and a worker. And I'd certainly agree, there's plenty of horror stories. I was hired in July of 2007, which started an 11 year journey of complete and utter hell. So many customers and workers have shared their gripes with GameStop on the internet. You are very expendable at GameStop. You are not special at GameStop. And some of the chain's stupid business decisions continue to just floor many people, such as GameStop opening a NFT marketplace. Why? Why would they do that? As of this video, 95% of NFTs are worthless because NFTs were a Ponzi scheme. They realized this in recent years and are shutting down their NFT marketplace. All that wasted investments, it could have gone to paying staff better. NFTs are just the worst. I was tempted to mention the short stock market squeeze GameStop got in 2021, where their stock suddenly went from $17 to $500. But I don't think people did that because they hated GameStop. Like NFTs, I think it just turned into an over-publicized Ponzi scheme. Maybe a couple of people got rich on these, but thousands times more people got into debt because of these. Now, for obvious reasons, GameStop has seen a decline in business in the last decade. Partially because digital markets like Steam have become more standard in the way of buying games. And partially because of the pandemic. It is a bad situation for GameStop. But GameStop is still huge, with over 4,400 stores around the world. Unfortunately, many of those buyers don't much care for GameStop's own digital website. In short, it sucks. For example, on Trustpilot, GameStop's website was given a grand total score of poor, averaging 1.9 based on over 2,300 reviews. To be fair, they've got some tough competition. Since yes, you can order a physical game and have to wait a week for it to come in the mail or just go down to get it at GameStop. Or a person can purchase it instantly on Steam or the Nintendo eShop. So what did customers have a problem with? Many reviewers on Trustpilot said the customer support was useless, or they didn't receive the items they ordered at all. Another big problem was people would receive secondhand non-working game hardware, like broken Bluetooth controllers, a whole lot of controllers for some reason. There were a lot of complaints about GameStop's quote unquote refurbished hardware. Often, GameStop's hardware just didn't work. Oh, what? Oh, oh, it just died! And then there's a GameStop employee complaints. There's a famous subreddit for GameStop employees who anonymously vent their frustrations with the company there. I even found a newer employee there simply asking this. Am I the only one here that loves their job? Because he just couldn't seem to find many Reddit GameStop staff who actually enjoyed their job. The administrator of the Reddit just said yes, but many staff agreed with this employee's clarification. Oh, oh I love my job. I just hate corporate and their decisions that make our lives harder. And that reflects my own experience too. Here in Australia, GameStop staff I've met have always been really kind and very attentive. Here and down under, we know GameStop as EB Games. As long as it's not too busy, staff have almost always greeted me. And they've often bent over backwards to help me with any inquiries I might have. But I felt bad for them when I learnt of some of GameStop's poor corporate practices. A famous issue enforced on all employees is the GameStop Circle of Life, where corporate pushes their staff to have a certain percentage of sales pre-orders or use games. None of us like to do it, but we are all scared for our jobs. Many staff reported this to be a emotionally distressing policy, and the policy led some staff to lying to customers. For example, saying a new game wasn't in stock, but a used game was. 
you really that's a total lie as a matter of fact there was a better sale coming next week where they could get a better price but they made us lie about it the complaints of gamestop just kept stacking up whether you've had good experiences at gamestop or not the reputation i found was hopeless from their ascii score to the poor reviews to the badly treated employees venting their frustrations i just never expected a mall store for video games to end up on so many people's naughty list haha Number 3. Target. Hang on, how? Target Australia is one of my favourite stores. Yeah, but this is Target America. Its reputation is worse. Yeah, Target America was recommended a lot by my community. For example, Courtney said, Target is so bad. The prices are ridiculous, the quality of stuff is bad, and one of my family members working there said the staff were awfully mistreated. These sounded like very good reasons for it to be hated. Still, I was very hesitant to put Target on this list. The reason was because of a very loud and recent quote unquote scandal, where Target has been, no pun intended, targeted by some nasty groups. Target has gotten backlash for just stocking some pride friendly merchandise. For over a decade, Target has tried to be welcoming and supportive to the LGBTQ plus community, and I respect that a lot. So to clarify, these are not the customer complaints we're looking at here. Personally, I'm much more concerned about stores that have a problem stocking Pride merchandise. Anyway, what are some of the real complaints Target has? Something more like Courtney's complaint in customer service. While I found a whole lot of angry complaints on Trustpilot with over 2,106 one-star reviews. And 73% of their reviews on consumer affairs were one-star ratings. The most frequent complaint I found was long wait times, such as Muriel mentions. Making it out of Target in under an hour is like trying to get my grades up. It's impossible. Oh, I'm sure you can get your grades up, Muriel. Linda had a similar problem. I wanted to buy underwear. The line was too long, so I had to use the self-checkout but I left the electronic tag on my bra. Someone should have helped me with this. They keep cutting me off when I ring them. And Linda definitely wasn't the only one having this problem. Poor customer support and poor phone service was a very frequent problem I found. Reviews also frequently mentioned that Target supposedly has bad <sighs> refund policies. Sorry, absolutely no refunds. And that's definitely been something that's turned me off stores too. When I don't feel comfortable returning items to a store, I don't buy expensive <laughs> items there. And because none of these retailers seem to be able to do decent online service, this was again a big issue with many, such as Yolanda. Target has the worst delivery program. They promise two day delivery, but that's a lie. We ordered twice and both times it was late. It even looked like someone played soccer with the box. But worst of all was this review from Semen. Oh, European name. And frankly, I can tell why he's so upset. In his review, Semen said, Biggest disrespect from the company ever. I can't save my card in this app because their system says my name contains profanity. Unfortunately, I can't show you the review because Trustpilot has since deleted the review for profanity in his name. That must get really annoying. Anyway, overall, I'd say Target staff are generally quite nice, but more staff are needed for those long wait times, and their phone service has been notoriously unreliable, and a little more leniency on that refund policy might help their reputation, because a customer's loyalty is worth a lot more than a pair of headphones. Yar, number two. Bed Bath & Beyond Back in the day, Bed Bath & Beyond was THE go-to place for home goods. In 2018, when Bed Bath Beyond Triple B was at its peak, the company had over a thousand stores in North America. But by 2023, Triple B had filed for bankruptcy, with very tragic events surrounding its closure and a terrible reputation was following it. Its closure is sure to go down as one of the highest profile US store failures for years. Walking through the stores in early 2023, there were slim pickings for this once great department store. So what happened to cause Triple B's closure in 2023? Well, back in the day, it was founded in New Jersey. No, that's not the reason. I'm not done yet. Are you sure? All right, all right. They get the joke, you silly goose. Nowadays, the store scores 1.3 stars on Trustpilot, 
Many customers were obviously not thrilled with the service. But what was it that made customers so mad? Well, behind the scenes, crazy stuff was happening. And the insanity mostly started in 2019, when their CEO stepped down after being ousted by activist investors. Following this shakeup, they remodeled all the Bed Bath & Beyond stores. This is what the new stores look like. And looking at the old ones, I think it was a nice change. Much less clutter. They appointed the new CFO, Gus Stavo in 2019, and he guided Triple B through the pandemic as best as anyone could. But sadly, the whole story would end tragically. In my opinion, it was the pandemic that destroyed Triple B, which led to other problems that made customers mad, like stock shortages. You see, during the pandemic, e-commerce popped up basically overnight, because obviously, many customers couldn't get to the store. Walmart was quick to offer online shopping, and Amazon already did, but Triple B was slower on the uptake. They had not invested in their technology, their online presence was slow and clunky. This is what led to frustrated, angry customers staring at empty shelves. So many of the supplies they wanted during the pandemic were out of stock. And as consumer prices rose, already frustrated shoppers had less demand for luxury products. As the lockdowns went on, Triple B was struggling to compete with Walmart, Target, and Amazon. All three of their competitors offered online stores and lots of home goods, and they weren't all out of stock. Sadly, by 2022, Triple B needed to close many of their stores and cut 20% of their staff. And class action fraud lawsuits are being filed against the company reps. And tragically, their CFO did not survive this. By 2023, Bed Bath & Beyond's reputation was shattered. Stores were closing everywhere and they filed for bankruptcy. But you know, Bed Bath & Beyond stores have been around since 1971 to 2023. Half a century is a damn impressive run for a business. And you know, maybe not everything's beautiful because it lasts. Land hall number one. The Home Depot. Ah, Home Depot. I've always been curious about this place. In Australia, our closest equivalent is Bunnings Warehouse. Nin and I love going there for a walk through the garden section. And while I'm very certain there's problems there, I don't think they could come close to the catastrophe that Home Depot in America is. Because they have some nasty controversy. From racism to staff embezzlement to lawsuits, Home Depot has truly seen it all. And customers are not scared to share their feelings on it either. With a sub-zero score of 1.5 stars on Trustpilot, Home Depot, you have some explaining to do. So let's see what part of this home improvement train wreck has people in such a tizzy. How do they do it? A buy one, get one, knees to the groin deal? Well, many of the reviews had quite similar gripes. Ninhun, can you summarize the reviews you read? Yeah, to quote them, if I could give a zero star, I would. Terrible service, online ordering sucks, no returns accepted, zero fucks <coughs> given, white rabbit, the end. White rabbit? Well, anyway, for some reason the service here is a massive massive problem. Yet somehow it pales in comparison to the other issues I found. You see, I found not one, but multiple accounts of employee embezzlement. And these were recent cases in 2022 and 2023, respectively. Which certainly begs the question, are employees fairly treated and fairly paid at Home Depot? Honestly, if you've ever worked for Home Depot, I'd be very interested to know. But aside from the things going on behind the counter, some believe racial bias creeps into the store too. Perhaps the most famous example is Tyrese Gibson. You might remember him from Fast and the Furious. I, I don't because I've never seen Fast and the Furious, but he seems like a nice guy. Apparently, he got caught up in a $1 million racial bias case against Home Depot. The story goes, he went to Home Depot with his building associates, Eric and Manuel. After being spotted by fans, he gave his credit card to his associates and went back to his car. Back in store though, his associates were refused service. They demanded the ID of the person's credit card they were using. Even after FaceTiming Tyrese for confirmation, the cashier still still refused to serve their customers. So Tyrese finally went back in and confronted the cashier. If you're interested, there's a whole YouTube video of the store exchange. For some reason, Home Depot's staff just seemed to have no interest in apologizing or serving Tyrese. They were so nonchalant, they just seemed to want Tyler to go away. 
I've no idea who pooped in their cereal that morning. Maybe they didn't like Fast and the Furious 10. After 10 minutes, they finally rang up Teresa's sale. But jeepers, what an embarrassingly long ordeal for customers. So yeah, Home Depot has developed a menial reputation with all these controversies, and their overall sub-zero customer reviews have not helped. To finish up, I should mention, it was refreshing to get back to discussing topics like restaurants and stores. I do like cartoons, but it's nice to expand outside them and maybe introduce you to a new topic in the process. Look after my friend, I'll be here. Thanks for watching and I hope I see you again in the future. What? Today's member question is from NLFJ1022. They ask, what is my most hated retail store? Well, there's been a lot, but off the top of my head, there was this really nasty store called Robin's Kitchen. I tried to return a faulty item to them and the staff member called me a liar and refused to talk to me until I left the store. But you know, some of the best service I've gotten has actually come from Electronics Boutique, AKA GameStop. Here in Australia, the store staff are almost always lovely. And when I go to Canada, almost every customer service person I've met was polite and friendly. So props to Canada for that. And I don't get tailgated when I go there. I always appreciate that.